In the mid-2000s, when it came to the best action, two hard-as-nails game series were at the top of the pile. One we've covered here plenty of times before, a franchise about being an ostentatious show-off. Looking cool, letting loose and loud. Hot. And the other, that on the flip side, had you take control of a refined, calculated, efficient, razor-sharp, deliberate assassin. Cold. In the return of one of gaming's most legendary and ruthless action IPs. Ninja Gaiden. In 2004, studio team Ninja, developer of the Dead or Alive fighting games, brought back the classic 2D side-scroller slasher that emerged in the arcade and on the NES in 1988 with spectacular fervor in beautiful three dimensions. The standard for swordplay for action combat jumped dramatically. If Devil May Cry solidified how to handle action in 3D with style and grace, then Ninja Gaiden was the next step, a step into unseen, visceral, fast-paced violence and technical opportunities. Remember, this was before DMC3 catapulted Devil May Cry back into the ranks of pioneering action. It's hard to look back on Ninja Gaiden as anything but an immeasurable accomplishment, and I think it's far overdue for this channel to put the spotlight on this legendary title. Ninja Gaiden is the story of Ryu Hayabusa, a modern-day young, dedicated, ruthless ninja whose clan and village is decimated by the Vigor Empire. Heading to its capital, Tyran, Ryu has one main objective to tear it to pieces. Ryu is a literal ninja, so his mobility abilities reflect that. You can run along and up walls whenever you want, which is like one of the most useful tools in your arsenal, and it just never gets old. Not only is it used for platforming challenges, but it creates a whole new dynamic to combat, making you view each room now as not just a square arena to fight in, but rather a full 3D space to use and take advantage of for attacks from all sorts of angles. This ups the ways you can enter a confrontation even more than just a regular action game where you can move and jump. Use a wall to get on an enemy's side or behind him, run up a wall behind you to create space and then jump back into things. The angles of approach are multiplied substantially. The animation on the wall running is so slick, so smooth, even though it would be impossible, you almost believe that a person at the peak of all physical ability could pull it off. And this describes Ryu's movement in a nutshell. It's outlandish, impossible, but it's executed with such confidence and grace on his part that you see him more as a human being at the height of discipline and technical prowess rather than just as some kind of superhero. My strength comes from training, not from some curse in my blood. The fact that he's uh, so serious at all times also contributes to that. This in turn informs the vibe and feel of a challenging game like Ninja Gaiden. Hard, brutal, Ryu is a focused, calculating killing machine, and you're gonna have to be in that same state of mind to beat this thing. I'm looking for a greater fiend named Oku. Do you know him? Why are you looking for him? I'm going to kill him. One of the design decisions that sticks out the most in Ninja Gaiden is how aggressive enemies are. They're here to kill you, and they'll start the process immediately. Far less keen on hanging around, waiting for you to combo on them like foes in other still mechanically complex action games. They also rarely show up with fanfare. They're just gonna come straight for you. You're not gonna have much time to react, keep your wits about you. And that goes for the moves you're inputting too. It's hard to cancel out of your attacks. You're usually committed after the input. Jumping, attacking, you have to be sure. But each move is so quick and seamless that the game still keeps its momentum going. The rigidity of the combat never sets in because you're constantly on the move from one attack to another. It's fast and frantic. You can mess up a move, but usually you can get straight back into things a split second later to try and turn the tables. And one thing that can help you turn those tables is essence. When an enemy gets killed, they'll drop yellow or blue souls, so to speak. No matter the color, by charging up your sword, it can be absorbed to instantly give Ryu a major attack to discharge. Just all over your foe, all over. Positioning is very important, knowing where to be and when to charge so you can get those orbs without being hit and unleash hell with them is the name of the game. Yellow Essence is also your currency for buying upgrades and items, and Blue Essence will actually heal you, nice. But only if you pick it up without charging. Blue Essence will give you that powerful attack, but if you get it that way, you won't get the health boost. This, frankly, 
is badass. The in the moment decision, deciding whether you want health like a little wounded baby or you want to bite back with a bang is such an exhilarating on the fly choice. Ninja Gaiden is a hard game, you might have heard. Checkpoints can be far away from each other and enemies hit like a truck, but something I find when playing is that there's rarely a reason to give up in the middle of a fight. If you can keep pressing on in a battle, you'll probably get some blue essence sooner than later. Ninja Gaiden's tough difficulty works because the moment to moment gameplay is just such a delight. Ryu slashes, wind up and connect super cathartically. He runs and jumps around the room in such an elegant way that messing around in combat is always a good time. He's got moves that push enemies away, moves that launch enemies, two types of parries, aerial moves, throws, the cooldown from each, always so fast that you can segue in and out of each one in a fluid and effortless manner. The camera occasionally zooming in to bring emphasis to a badass cut down, quickly and without interfering too much. Ninja Gaiden runs the risk of doing annoying, frustrating things, and sometimes it does, but as I said, it's all so fast that before you have time to be annoyed, you're back at it. A lot of these moves may seem basic today, but there's one technique which I think everyone can agree will always go down as a legendary takedown any day of the week. The Azuna Drop. Once you get this move, half the fun of the game becomes uh, how best to use the Azuna Drop in this situation. Ryu juggles the enemy in the air, getting our protagonist out of harm's way before then spiraling them into the ground, causing some gnarly splash damage as a result. The part of the game where I feel Ninja Gaiden sags the most is during the underground tomb chapters, because there's all these big ass zombie dudes who, uh, you can't Azuna Drop. Putting my hands up here, big question, why can't I go from the launch parry into the Azuna Drop? I feel like I should be able to. Am I just not good enough? Am I not timing it right? This takes a solid point off the game's score if this isn't doable. Ryu's movement isn't at all limited to the few moves he has on his sword though, there's loads of other weapons to equip and play around with. The problem is, as is usually the case with action games from this era, the gameplay can feel a little bit restricted by only being able to have one melee weapon out at once without switching in the menu. The effort of going in to see if something else would be more useful in a given scenario. Sometimes I just can't be bothered. Remember again, this was before DMC3 made weapon switching combos feel like an action game must. Some weapons are more situational than others, and look, I get it, they probably couldn't have had all this shit on hand in the RAM to get out at a moment's notice, but it doesn't change how much time you'll be spending in the menu in this game. Projectile weapons, magic, arrow types, I feel like one of these could have had a toggle to switch through mid-gameplay. By the end of the game, you'll be flicking around this menu so much, and it kind of becomes a bit of a clusterfuck as to where everything is by the end. Magic also feels like a bit of a weak point in combat. Most of them, except for one, just kind of freeze you in place, making you invulnerable so Ryu can fry something stress-free in the room. Some kind of mega power-up that enhances Ryu's moveset in real time, as to not interrupt things, rather than just giving him an easy hit, would probably be more interesting. But honestly, this is such a hectic, fast-paced game that the couple seconds you get off when doing these moves are honestly kind of appreciated. What can I say? This is a hardcore gamer's game. It's a gamer's game, ladies and gentlemen. Nitpicking aside, there's only really one serious thing I think Ninja Gaiden lacks and would improve the experience a lot. <clears throat> a manual lock-on feature. <sighs> I'm in dangerous territory now. I feel like this might be contentious. I don't know the Ninja Gaiden fans very well. They don't meme it up quite as hard as other fan bases. I don't know when or where they're gonna pounce, what they think. They're kind of in the shadows, they really take that whole being a ninja thing seriously. Ninja Gaiden doesn't let you choose what enemy to hone Ryu's attention in on, so we have situations where sometimes it's just like, where the fuck are you going, Ryu? This is a case of me pressing the attack button before Ryu has had time to readjust to where I'm now pointing the movement stick. Of course, he wouldn't have to think it through so hard if there was a manual lock on. And the game just absolutely knew for certain I want to attack that enemy. The automated loose lock-on the game implements itself just kind of lets Ryu pick whatever he wants independent from you. You know, he'll sometimes go for the wrong enemy, sometimes he'll lock on when I want to hit something else. Moves that involve holding forward to change the end of a combo string are fine, but attacks like Flying Swallow, which are based on proximity and angle, can be a bit harder to judge sometimes. 
Flying Swallow, you fly at the enemy and cut him to shreds by jumping and pressing attack and forward, but based on some kind of nebulous criteria of distance to the foe, Ryu will sometimes not do the move and instead slash straight down to the ground. It's like, Ryu, just because you didn't feel like doing the move I wanted doesn't mean I want you to cycle through to what you consider the next best substitute. Having something like a manual lock-on button could probably help compartmentalize moves a little bit better. Maybe Flying Swallow could have been toggled on when locking on and slashing down, which I really want to do that much, could have been toggled on when not locking on. Welcome to my tortured mind's wish list for this 14-year-old game. I also don't really get why excelling in combat, getting these karma points to achieve high ranks at the end of chapters, doesn't elicit any tangible rewards like, say, currency? To buy upgrades? Come on, give me a little boost for doing well. Back in the day, you could upload your scores to the leaderboards and get in on an international Ninja Gaiden competition, granted. But today, you just kind of have to do the ranks for your own ego. Or to look semi-competent when passing judgment in a YouTube video. On the uncontroversial observation side of things, holy shit, does this game look good. The power of the original Xbox and what Team Ninja got out of it here can't be stressed enough. 2004, it's hard to believe. And this game runs super smooth, which you would be able to tell if I hadn't accidentally set my capture card to record interlaced, which smushed all the frames together, making my gameplay come out at 30 FPS instead of 60. Oh, what? Oh, come on. What, you want me to replay the whole game again? You want me to take this video down, spend another month on it? Come on, just get real. The game uses all sorts of cool angles to stress the beauty of its levels. The environmental detail here is just ramped up so high, and they use it for a lot of varying types of locations. I'd like to tell you what continents the game takes place on, what part of the world, but it's hard to really figure it out. The Middle East? Africa? South America? I mean, it all looks great, so I, I ain't complaining. The only thing that will remind you that you're playing an old game are the pre-rendered CGI cutscenes. Not because they've aged terribly badly or anything, just because their 16x9 presentation is a lie. Play with that setting for the CGI clips turned on and the game actually just zooms in to what are actually 4x3 clips. I don't really get how if such a forward-thinking game like Ninja Gaiden cut above the rest presentation-wise with a 16x9 mode for gameplay, Team Ninja wouldn't have just made fully 16x9 pre-rendered cutscenes back in the day and instead zoomed those out for 4x3 displays. I guess that extra bit of screen real estate is expensive to get the lads to animate. Speaking of the narrative of this game, it's not... It's not really the strong point. Ninja Gaiden's plot has about the same amount of substance and content as Devil May Cry 1. Only DMC 1's story is spread across like a 4-hour game, while Ninja Gaiden's is budded across like a 12-hour one. And who am I kidding, even DMC 1 had a little more substance, gave a little more character to its characters. Earlier, I brought up that Ninja Gaiden isn't as memed as hard as most other top-tier fuckboy fighters and galaxy brain brawlers. You know, other good action games. And I think a lot of that has to do with Ryu. He's just kind of a stoic dude. Not much charisma or unexpected behavior from him. Not really as interesting to watch as, say, a Dante or a Gene, a Travis, or even a Kratos. He's just kind of self-serious. I mean, he's really self-serious. Everybody is here, but Ryu takes it so far that it almost loops back into comedic. His inability to protect his village must be haunting him, even in the afterlife. All right, I'm sure he did his best. What a careless repair job. Are they trying to make fun of ninjas? Okay, look, I'm sorry, Ryu, that not everybody is as dedicated to their work as much as you are to being a murderer. It doesn't really matter too much, though, if Ryu isn't lighting the stage on fire with his dialogue. You're a bloody ninja, and levels like the ninja base at the start in Japan and the city of Tyron are awesome because of this. You really feel like a Japanese acrobat jumping around these places. The juxtaposition of Ryu, a ninja running around this urban playground, is especially cool. I think the game kind of cops out environment-wise outside of this, though. There's a lot of underground tunnels in the middle section of the game, and for no real reason at all, you take a detour into basically a slapdash Metroid Prime level with token penis monsters and everything before the third act kicks into gear. It's not, like, super inspired, is what I'm saying. What shall we do next? ice cavern or whatever. That all said, the environments are made quite fun to navigate thanks to the fact it's all interconnected. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden does kind of have a Metroid-style world with puzzles and collectibles that unlock new areas. Like all those other action games that totally aren't the same genre as this and we can't compare to each other. Lots of places to explore and secrets to find here. It's cool that what starts as a maze-like foreign land becomes a place you're super familiar with by the end, as you use your prior knowledge of your surroundings to make it back from place to place later on. No waypoints or anything. 
you've conquered the city by the end. And the end of the game is classic, classic stuff. You gotta enter the fucked up demon hell level with, uh, yep, loads of eyeballs. Ooh, okay, we have some edge legends making this one, boys. We've upped our game to fetuses now. So what are we gonna do for the final level, guys? Just... Just, just a lot of skulls. Either these things come from like giants' heads, or the demons really cracked on with some next level art attack papier mache shit to make these and get their decor going. You get a little boss rush here before the true final boss, who of course you fight in a volcano. Glad to see we, uh, we finally got a Shad base face reveal here after all these years. And would it be complete without a one-on-one -on -one classic man-on-man -man rival slugfest to close things out as the sun sets after the ancient evil has been defeated? Fuck this war! I just want you dead! It's the best trope in video games. Anyway, yeah. Great job, Ryu. Oh, he can become a bird? Could he always do that? Or is this just like a really elaborate smoke bomb and he's hidden behind a rock and walks home? Ninja Gaiden is a badass, legendary game. So legendary, they actually added a bunch of free DLC in the two hurricane packs, all the way back on the original Xbox. Crazy stuff. A year later, the game was then re-released as Ninja Gaiden Black, with the DLC included and some extra tweaks and balances. There's like a bit of a Kingdom Hearts final mix thing going on with new enemies, a higher difficulty level and that. One of the big changes though was the addition of a fully controllable camera. N no, no manual lock on there. Yeah, the original game's controls only gave you the ability to place the camera behind Ryu. As big as this change might sound, it, it isn't a super big deal. The original is still equally as playable. It's not the monumental shift in quality of life that say Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence updated freely controllable camera was to Snake Eater. It's nice to have it though. Black's got some new weapons, some new cutscenes, but the big one for us Euro Bros is that, unlike Ninja Gaiden 2004, Black isn't censored over here. So Ryu will be brutally chopping off heads with the best of them, finally. One feature from the Hurricane DLCs that didn't make it over, though, is the intercept move, which, I mean, I don't know, and it was another sort of parry that absorbed attacks. Apparently, it made the game too easy, and therefore it doesn't show up in black, but since you can't get those old DLCs anymore, the move is lost to time and those with homebrewed Xboxes. Yeah, no surprise there, video game companies continue to be goddamn aces at this preservation shit. I'm waiting on tenterhooks until all the 7th gen downloadable content goes offline and we have to live in a world where you can't get Azura's Wrath's ending anymore. Or I don't know, hard mode for Sonic 06, whatever floats your boat. Finally, in 2007, we got Ninja Gaiden Sigma for the PlayStation 3, which, unlike Black contains some quite drastic changes to the original game. Alterations that make for quite a bit of debate amongst Ninja Gaiden fans. We've jumped to console gen, so Sigma gives Ninja Gaiden a bit of a facelift in terms of textures and details. It looks great, but a lot of that, as I said, has to do with how amazing the original already looked. I actually sort of took to the less drab, more colorful look here. I, I'm sorry, I wish I was a cool purist, but... You can cycle through healing items in real time, cutting down on the use of menus just ever so slightly. It's not weapon switching, but it reduces interruption, so it's good in my book. There's a new weapon, these twin blades you can pick up. I don't really know how to feel about them, to be honest. Usually, each weapon in Ninja Gaiden has a modest amount of moves. You switch between them to keep things interesting. These bad boys, on the other hand, ramp things up to 11 with some Bayonetta levels of variation. Why is everybody feuding over the Dragon Blade or the Dark Blade thingy-mabob in the story anymore when we have this shit now? There was a cutscene where Ryu got his ass kicked in the original early on, but now you can play that fight. Rumor has it, apparently, if you overcome the odds and win, you can unlock higher difficulties quicker at some point. I wasn't able to verify this. I think my favorite change, though, has to be that after you do a two-mission expedition down into the depths of the Earth, this skull key you get there now opens a sturdy-looking door, rather than this hilariously weak chain-link fence. Look, Ryu, I'm pretty sure I could circumvent that. Of course, the real big alteration is the level design of the game. There are loads more save points and shops dispersed amongst the world. Sigma edits and tweaks with abandon. Whole puzzle rooms are cut, replaced with just simple fights. It's kind of crazy, and I don't really know if I'm on board. Black added tweaks here and there, but you know, it was little stuff. Expansion pack stuff. Removing entire sections and puzzles in Sigma is altering the fabric and intention of Ninja Gaiden to an extent. This platform puzzle here is one of the main sections streamlined out or straight up replaced. It's legit cutting content. 
Ninja Gaiden wasn't just a game about fighting dudes with a sword, it was a game about being a ninja, exploring strange places, interacting with weird contraptions. Indiana Jones, anybody? It's funny, because I guess if you're already a fan of Ninja Gaiden and have played the older versions, this might not be a big deal. If you've solved these puzzles before in the older versions, maybe now you just want to cut to the core gameplay. But to new players, it feels like they'll kind of be cheated out of some stuff without really knowing it. Oh, but in exchange, you do get three new chapters here where you play as Rachel, the SNM Demon Hunter, and uh, Demon Goop Exfoliation Expert. Eh, I wasn't really into those. No, 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 I mean, those are good, sure. I meant her levels. It's just chunks of Ryu stages remixed for 10 minutes where you maybe fight a new boss. Some cheeky new bosses hidden in here. Like these two demon chicks who actually were in black if you were playing on very hard mode. You know, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll go get some footage of that someday. The problem is Rachel doesn't play substantially different enough from Ryu to really justify these stages, as far as I'm concerned. She's Ryu without the wall running or the Azuna drop, you know, the best parts of these games. These days, games get extra characters a lot more right, a lot right, a lot righter, a lot, a lot better. You want to play as Sam in Metal Gear Rising because he has this new different charge attack combo stuff that Raiden doesn't, and, you know, taunts, stuff that make him more distinct from the main protagonist. Your boy Virgil has the concentration meter. Playing measured and calculated nets you powerful moves as him. These characters have new types of meta to experiment with that reflect their personality. While Rachel just feels like Ryu could be doing what she's doing. Dropping some combos, charging her thing, etc. Sigma is a lot easier than prior versions because there's a lot more save points and shops. Again, I kind of feel like the original placed its save points where they were for a reason. To make specific moments more challenging than others, to put the pressure on a little. But honestly, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Special edition for DMC3 added more checkpoints and everyone plays that version of the original. I guess they did give you the choice there, you know, based DMC3. The core challenge of the gameplay isn't really lost in Sigma. Though I think we are censored again, you know, make up your minds, guys. One of the weirdest omissions is this arcade machine, which I guess is still technically there, just invisible now. We've discovered the only thing in this ninja game capable of stealth, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I can't address all the changes made in each version of this game because one, I don't really have the time, and two, it'd probably get kind of boring. Oh yeah, and then there's the Vita version of Sigma. Okay, now I gotta draw the line somewhere. But of course, you're probably wondering which version I think is the best. It's probably black, though it's not like I'd kick Sigma out of bed if I had no alternatives. I reserve the right to get mad at Sigma if when I get super into high-level play in black or MLG Pro, I discover they removed some sick tech or something, I guess. I think the thing that puts me off Sigma the most are the flabby Rachel levels. Makes the game seem a lot less tight and consistent, a lot more stitched together. Ninja Gaiden has enough content, really, without this. Consider Sigma more of a remix of a classic tune rather than any kind of replacement. But whichever version you play, one thing is for certain. They all have the Azuna drop. Best move in video games. Ninja Gaiden 2004 is a game that stays true to itself. It's a game about a technical master ninja, so the gameplay reflects that. It's a brutal struggle to stay alive. It's the follow-up to a series of super tough retro games. Well, if that was the spirit back then, we're keeping it alive today. Or back in 2004, at least. It's cool how much you can feel the echo of those older titles in this one. 80s Ninja Gaiden was tough, but so fun to interact with. Jumping around off walls and slashing was a good time, no matter how much you died. Just like here with NG04, despite the dramatic boost in complexity. There's attitude here in the design decisions, the way the game deliberately decides to just be a little bit cheeky with checkpoint placement, and introduce some enemies that just push things maybe a little bit too far, a little bit to the point of... Mm-hmm. A taunting smile on the face of those who created the game. But that wouldn't work if each encounter wasn't satisfying to overcome. Every attack animation, the sound they elicit, the battle cries Ryu makes while exerting himself, each move, they all beg to be immediately followed up from. And you have to follow them up before you get stamped on. With barely any breathing room in between attacks, it just makes you want to keep refining until you're just a force plowing through. Of course, it goes without saying that NG is dedicated to its gamey roots. Never is there any downtime, cinematic lurching, it's all gameplay every second requiring thought and technique. 
We're not in the walking era just yet. There's a very specific feeling that you get when you overcome a fight in this game. When everything comes together, you've chained it all into one string of death. Like a short melody almost, each note leading into the next. All while having to deal with enemies that with one move can do so much damage. Once they lie in pieces at your feet, when victory is achieved in this title, you feel like a ninja. Hey there, gang. Thanks for watching. This video on Ninja Gaiden is part of a Ninja Gaiden retrospective series that was started because you lovely backers got me to this goal on Patreon. If you're interested in helping the show and securing more content like this, then please consider backing over at patreon.com slash thegamingbritshow. Thanks to my top backers scrolling by now, and catch you later. Sunshin no jutsu! Poof, I'm gone.